virtual roll call, Madam Clerk. He is muted. He's muted. Okay, roll call, Madam Clerk. Council Member Wiley. Present, appearing um, from my home in Inkster, Michigan, County of Wayne. Council Member Chisholm. Present, report, mm, reporting virtually from my home, Inkster, Michigan, County of Wayne. Council Member Shaw. Council Member Shaw, are you with us? You see him. Did he? Did we lose him? His name is on here. It says he's unmuted. Maybe he's having some technical difficulties. Yes. There he is. There he is. <laughs> Council Member Williams. County of Wayne. Council Member Washington. Appearing, re appearing virtually from my home in the city of the Inkster County of Wayne. And I must acknowledge our chair, Mayor Pro Tem Howard. Yes, here, um, virtual in the city in the city of Inkster in my home. We have a quorum. All right, Madam Chair. I'm sorry, I didn't uh, say I was here in the city of Inkster. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Okay, you know the dad, City Clerk. Yes. All right. Pledge of Allegiance, uh, <clears throat> Councilman Williams, would you like to give us a prayer? Let us pray. Father God, we come right now in no other way but lean on your everlasting love. Father, we just ask that you guide us and lead us in this city of Mexico to become that city of love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Okay, Troy, uh, Pledge of Allegiance, thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, 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 indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. Oh, we did roll call, I'm we sorry. <laughs> okay, approval of agenda. So move. Any support? Support. It's been moved and supported. Uh, roll call, City Clerk. Council Member Chisholm. Yes. Council Member Shaw. Yes. Council Member Williams. Me. Council Member Washington. Yes. And Council Member Wadley. No. So we have a five, one, four, I'm sorry, four yes and one nay. Okay, approved. Okay, we do have a presentation from Mr. Stephen Grady. I'm not I'm sure if he's point, on. Point of clarification. There were two nays. There were two nays? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Councilman Williams voted nay. Okay. okay, so it's two names. So three and two. Okay. Okay, approval of agenda has been passed. Okay, up under um, presentation, we do have Mr. Stephen Grady. Is he on the line? If he is, can someone unmute him? Um. I see a Steven's iPhone. I'm uh, not that's, sure. That's him. Yeah, he did raise his hand. He's raising his hand. So I think that's him. Yes. He's unmuted. Hi, Mr. Grady. Hello, everyone. How are you? I'm trying to start my video as well. I'm not able to uh, get that unlatched. Uh, the host would have to. Um, COI AV would have to, uh, there we go. There we go. Okay. There I am. Hey everyone. How are Hi. you? Hi. How are you? Doing very well. Um, I would also ask the host 
my colleague, uh, Javion Johnson, should be on the call as well. And if I can have the host to um, add him to this discussion, I would appreciate it. And to this August body, I thank you all so much for giving me an opportunity to speak with you uh, tonight during your session. I bring you greetings from our Wayne County Executive, Warren Evans, and he appreciates the opportunity to share with you just a few things about our emergency rental assistance program. Let me make sure that uh, Javion, there he is. Javion, could you introduce yourself, please? Hey, good evening, family. My name is Javion Johnson, Community Outreach Liaison for the Wayne County Executive. It's good to see all the familiar faces. So thank you for having Hi. us. Hi, how are you? Good, good. That's good. So we're going to go right into it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have a short video that I'm going to show. And then uh, I want to turn it over to Javion, who will explain uh, the details of the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, also known as ERAP. And then we'd like to open it up to any brief uh, questions or comments uh, from the council that you might have for us. If I could share my content, I do have a brief video that I'd like to be able to show. So I'm going to ask the host to give me the ability to share my screen. I'll be able to now. Very good. Thank you, Councilman Chisholm. Good to see you. Namesake. Hey, good to you see you as well. You are the V-E-N. I am the C-A-N. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let me see if uh, I can sort this out here where I can share. I'm seeing some things on here. I don't see the ability to share my screen, which is what I would be able to do. Um, possibly I can share the website. So give me just one second and pull that up. Yes, my apologies, Mr. Stevens. Um, it looks as if you're accessing the meeting from a phone, so I'm not sure what the shared capabilities of that is on that device. Yes, I'm, I apologize, you all. I am so new into this position that I don't fully have Zoom loaded to my laptop, so I'm having to kind of cobble together an experience from my phone, and I apologize for that. Um, Javion, are you on your phone or are you on your laptop? I am on my laptop. Are you able to display that link that I sent to you from the county executive? Let me give it a try. I am one second. I'm pulling up the link now. Okay. Apologize for the technical snafus, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am actually 20 days into my new position and we're trying to sort things like this out. Um, but I appreciate your patience with us. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I should be pulling it up shortly. Thank you, Javion. Mm -hmm. Ah, there it is. We can't hear the audio. We just need the voice, yeah.
Javion, if you could send me a copy of the link. Um, there's a audio prompt that you have to select before you uh, showcase the video. Okay, I'll send it. I'll open up the chat box. <laughs> okay, Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> We're not going there today. <laughs> I just seen that too. Wow. This is probably on on me more so than anyone else. See the Javion has sent the link in the chat. So if someone is able to pull that up, I didn't know that I could not share my screen. I thought that I would be able to do that off this phone, but I see. All right, I have it pulled up if you want me to share it. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Counselor, right, he, got, he, he got it. Look like you got it. All right, perfect. It's just a brief video that'll kind of set the tone for what we're going to discuss. Hello, I'm Wayne County Here Executive Warren Evans. If you're a renter or landlord in Wayne County living outside of Detroit, you can still get relief for any housing issues related to COVID-19. Wayne County's Emergency Rental Assistance Program can keep you from losing your home and significantly ease your situation. Qualified individuals can have their rental arrears covered up to 12 months as well as future rent for up to three months. For more information, visit the website below and thank you. And thank you all so much for that. We appreciate your indulgence. Um, so the program is really simple. It will pay 12 months in arrears and up to three months in advance of your rent if you meet the qualifications. And Javion is going to take you through what's going on in Inkster. This is a program that is really for the rest of the county outside of Detroit. Detroit has its own funds and, and pot to pull from. But this program is for those cities in Wayne County that are outside of Detroit. So Javion, would you like to take over? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, so as Mr. Grady said, uh, this, this program is very important as we are in tough times during the pandemic. Uh, eligibility wise, we are targeting uh, households who have um, come to harsh uh, financial undertakings, um, household incomes at or below the area's median income, 80% of the area's medi medium income, excuse me one or more individuals must qualify uh, for unemployment benefits or have experienced a reduction in household income uh, 90 days prior to uh, completion of your application. Um, again, as Mr. Grady said, it is open to all Wayne County residents who do not reside in Detroit. Uh, there are stipends as well as uh, other grants that will be given out for uh, household bills, whether it's electricity, home and heating, water, sewer, internet, and trash. And there is also a stipend for relocation costs. And I'll give you some of those numbers shortly. Um, just a little background, there's around 45,000 households who are behind on their rent in Wayne County. That's roughly $103 million estimated in rental debt. Uh, the average rent debt per, house, per household is $2,200. So as we get into the amount of assistance, uh, in regards to people who have suffered late fees or were late on turning in their rent, we have a maximum coverage of $400. Uh, in regards to utilities, they do it by uh, amount of residents in a household. So one to two residents, uh, they receive a maximum of $1,500 for their household. Uh, residents who have a household of three or four people receive $2,000. Uh, 
And this is in regards to uh, utilities um, and residents who have five plus uh, family members in their household receive up to a max of $2,500. And if they have suffered any shutoffs, there will be a stipend of $500 just to make sure we cover the cost and get their uh, utilities back going. Um, in regards to accessibility to uh, the application, you can contact the call center at 833-742-1513. Again, that's 833-742-1513. Uh, and once you get in contact with the, with the hotline, uh, there, is, there is an option uh, for those who need application assistance to actually set up an appointment and uh, they will direct you to the nearest uh, location. For Inkster, your location is Focus Hope at 759 Inkster Road. Uh, that's Inkster, Michigan, 48141, of course. But again, that's at Focus Hope. So once you call that number and set up an appointment, we can get you started uh, either over the phone or in person. Um, if you want to sign up today, because we're encouraging people to do it as soon as possible, so that we can get these funds to those who are in need as soon as possible. You can visit www.waynecounty.com backslash rental assistance. Again, that's www.waynecounty.com backslash rental assistance. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jay Bion. And in the, um, in the chat, I did, post a link to our Webb County site that will have more information about the Emergency Rental Assistance Program. And what we're asking each city council to do, we're going to be going to city councils throughout the county. We need your help. You know the people in Inkster better than we do. You know who needs help. This is, we have $9 million. I'm going to say that again. $9 million that we are trying to get out to the community. So we want to partner with you in this process to get the word out, to get people to get over their fear of putting in an application so that they can uh, get access to this money. Landlords can also make an application as well. So if you got a landlord, who knows that they have um, uh, a tenant that is in arrears, the landlord can make an application too. We're just asking really to get the word out, help us, help us, help us, because this is way too important. We've got people right now who are sitting somewhere stressing out because their rent is in arrears and we have the solution. If we don't get the word to them, Shame on us. I know I've got my councilwoman Washington here, my very good friend, and I know you're going to help us. Our clerk is going to help us. We appreciate you all giving us this time to share. If there are any uh, one or two questions that you might have, JB on and I would be willing to try to take a stab at them. Okay, it's opening up. Anyone have any, any questions? Um, this is Councilwoman Washington. Um, I don't have any questions. I would just like to um, thank both uh, Mr. J. Van Johnson and also Stephen Grady for coming to actually share this information with us so we can actually get this out to our constituents. Absolutely. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, I do no have problem. a question for you. Um, when is the deadline? So. What we're trying to do is the deadline that we have set up is March 31st. We're trying to get this money out by March 31st, because what will happen then is all of the uh, cities and counties and entities who have not met their target of spending 75 percent of the money they have received, that mm -hmm. money will go into a pot and the ones who did hit their target will be able to draw from those resources and have even more money that they can give out. So that's why we're trying to push so hard so we can get to that second wave of, of uh, money that will be available. 
Okay, so is this for rental, rental only, or is it home ownership to, as well? Yes, ma'am. It's only for rentals. Only for renters. Okay. Yes. Okay. And my last question to you is: uh, Once a landlord applies, would the app, would the renter know that the landlord is applying, to, so it won't be confused? You know, will they? Will they know? Yes, ma'am. I do believe that there is a a uh, collaboration that has to occur there once the once the landlord applies. I believe that the renter has to apply as well. Javion, do you have yeah. any information about that? So there are two separate applications, one for the landlord and one for the renter as well. So once you do click on that link uh, to the Wayne County Rental Assistance Program, uh, it will give you two options for landlord and for renter. So that will okay. be uh, <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I would like, if it, is there any more questions from the audience? Yes. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I have a, I'm sorry, um, Chair. I had a, another um, quick question. In regards to uh, when you applied for for the uh, this program, uh, renter or landlord, what is the usually expected turnaround for the renters when they need assistance for them to actually receive the funds? Now, you know what? That is a good question. Javion, do you have an answer for that? I don't have a, a clear cut answer for the turnaround. Okay. Uh, I know if they do get in contact with the hotline number that that would be provided to them. Um, but I can also uh, get in contact with our economic development team and give you an answer tomorrow morning. OK, great. So we will get back to you, counsel and clerk, with an answer for that uh, of what the turnaround, average turnaround time is once the application has been submitted. Okay. Okay. Uh, Councilman um, Chisholm, we may have some hands out there that may want to ask, uh, some participants may want to ask questions. I do see uh, Sergeant Walls raising her hands. If you can just open it up. Um, sit, oh, there you go. Good evening, everyone. I just had a question with regards to the uh, program. If the landlord is not in compliance, is the question of certificate of compliance part of the program requirements? In other words, are landlords required to be in compliance in order to qualify for the program? That is an excellent question as well. Uh, Javion, unless you have an answer, I think to research that one too. I am documenting these questions so that we can <laughs> relate okay. back to this. Thank you. And no problem. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, a tape. Top of my head, I do think that uh, you, the landlord is probably going to have to be in compliance. I know answer. Thank you. And the reason I asked the question is we did have someone recently who was in a situation where uh, I believe they had applied for the program and there was questions about whether or not the property was up to code and that was part of the issue. And so I just thought it would be pertinent for landlords to know that in in going forward and hopefully um, the potential to obtain funds for their tenants to come into compliance. That's a great question. And we will research that and get uh, information back to everyone tomorrow. Thank My you. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, Octavia Smith. Yes, good evening, Pro Tem and residents and council. Hope everybody is well. I just want to say that I have, I sit with the MEDC every Friday when we do these um, presentations on the ERAP program and things like that. So I've actually walked um, patients at Western Wayne Family Health Center through the process completely. No issues with their applications and, and then a lot of them. And they still have not received an answer or anything. So this has been going on since, um, for about two months. And all these patients that we have um, participating in this program, they have not received anything. 
they've actually tried to contact because they had it, hadn't gone through any Metro and through other organizations, but they have not gotten any help as of yet. So um, I hear what you're saying and everything, and I know that there's money available, but none of the patients or a lot of the Inkster residents who have applied for this program they have not been helped as of yet. So I just wanted to share that information. Maybe you guys got some information where they can really get the help that they need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What I am doing uh, is putting my email in the chat. So if someone would like to contact me with a specific name, I will investigate that process and see where they are in the in the pipeline and we will sort that out. All right, that sounds good. Okay. Okay, we have one more hand that was raised Easter Chamber of Commerce. And Javion has placed his email in the chat as well, you can contact either one of us and we will research that, find out what's going on and see if we can remove that uh, to folks getting their funding. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, my name is Peggy Bishop Lucas and I was wanting to ask the question for those tenants that may be delinquent in water. I wanted to know if there was any programs available to help tenants that were behind in their water, please. Thank you. Yes, Javion, would you answer that? Yes, once you, once you do submit, submit your application, there is assistance for utilities and water is covered. Okay, beautiful. Absolute. Another utility that is covered is also um, uh, internet. And so your wireless connection as well is something that can be uh, uh, handled as well. Hmm. So Madam Clerk, that, that's all that we have. I want to thank uh, this August body and particularly Pro Tim for reaching out and inviting us to come and to share information about the Emergency Rental Assistance Program. JV and I, JV and I will take your questions and comments and we will research them and get back to you uh, within 24 hours with some answers. And if anyone has participated in the program and you, you've come to a log jam, we did put our email address in the chat. Please reach out to us because this is so, so important. We want to make sure that everyone who is eligible to get these funds and has applied can get these funds and get that pressure off of them. Save your home for the holidays. Thank no, you all right. so much. Thank you, guys. Now, I will be talking to you. Okay? Thank you. Yes, <laughs> Okay, moving on, uh, consent agenda. What's going on here? So move. It's been moved, do I have any support? Support. Okay, it's been moved in support. Um, Madam Clerk, roll call. Muted. Okay, Council Member Williams. Yes. Council Member Washington. Yes. Council Member Watley. Yes. Council Member Chisholm. Yes. Council Member Shaw. Yes. Madam Chair, you have five yeas, zero nays. All right, moving on to new business. All right, Madam Clerk, it's your. First item for discussion is for this body to consider approval of the sale of one vacant parcel located on Fernwood between Harrison Street and Eastern Street 
to a local resident in the amount of $1,500. Okay, what's your pleasure? Support. Okay, it's been supported. You you mean moved? I mean moved, my apologies. Okay. That's okay, that's okay. It's been moved, do I have any support? Yes, support. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Uh, hey, City Clerk, roll call. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Any discussion? It's been moved and it's been moved and is it any discussion? I apologize for that. Is there any discussion on this item? Okay, hearing none. Okay, City Clerk. Council Member Washington. Yes. Council Member Wadley. Yes. Council Member Chisholm. Yes. Council Member Shaw. Yes. And Council Member Williams. Yeah. Madam Chair, that's five to zero. All right, motion carried. Item B. Item B is also for this body to consider approval of the sale of one vacant parcel located on the east side of Irene between Carlisle Street and Andover to a local resident in the amount of $1,500. So move. For moving and supported. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, uh, roll call. Council Member Wadley. Yes. Council Member Chisholm. Yes. Council Member Shaw. Yes. Council Member Williams. Yes. Yeah. And Council Member Washington. Yes. Madam Chair, that's 5 0 vote. Okay, motion carried. Okay, we are now at public participation. Uh, limit time is one minute. Councilman Chisholm, can you start? Sure. Uh, for those who joined us by Zoom, application, please use the raise hand feature to be recognized. For those who have joined us by telephone, please use star nine to raise your hand to be recognized. Once you are unmuted, you have one minute to address this body. Please state your name for the record. At this time, Madam Chair, we have one hand raised. All right. Hello, yes, my name is Roscoe Jenkins. I would like to state that George Bernard Williams was very inappropriate and out of order earlier, and I'm glad he was muted. Secondly, where was this emergency rental program back in 2019 when Mayor Wembley was evicted twice for failing to pay his rent? Third, this is the last electronic meeting allowed by the Open Meetings Act. So see you all soon at the beginning of January. Thank you. Thank you. So we don't have any more, any more hands raised? We don't have any more hands raised. All right, that's, that concludes our public participation. Uh, City Clerk? I have a um, couple of things. Uh, the first is based on our last meeting, there was interest in uh, a special meeting workshop type activity to begin um, evaluating and planning the budget and also for some uh, a training opportunity. So I'll be sending emails out tomorrow with suggested dates um, for this activity. And you guys could probably use the voting buttons on the email to let me know what you think, or just let me know your schedule. Secondly, uh, I'd just like to wish everybody a, a joyous season, Christmas season, and uh, joyous new year and i look forward to seeing you all back in the new year all right thank you all right city treasurer um i have nothing to report but i also would like to say merry christmas to everyone and i hope everyone has a happy new year mm, thank, thank you. you okay mayor and council communication 
All right, we're going to start with Councilman Williams. Yes, I would like to, to um, ask the treasurer. I, I, I requested all, all of the employees and, and, and the position in each department. I uh, haven't got it yet. I'm, I'm still waiting on it uh, uh, to the treasurer, if you're still online. Yes, I'm gathering that information for the um, um, actuaries. So I've got requests out to each department to give me an actual count for each employee. And once I get each department, I do have some department's information, but not everyone's. So when I get everyone's response, I'll send that to you. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. All right, uh, Councilwoman uh, Washington. Um, yeah, so I would just like to, of course, uh, wish everyone a happy holidays. Um, happy holiday going into the new year. And also, I uh, would also like to um, thank the Inkster Police for acting fast, um, where they were able to act fast and help a young lady. So I just want to thank the Inkster Police Department for all that they do for our community and our residents and assisting us to keep the community um, safe and just helping helping people in our community. So I just want to say that as well. All right, thank you. Thank you. Councilman Watley. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I would like to go back to my original uh, talk in uh, talking about the uh, moratorium that is uh, currently in effect that needs to be revisited because it has not accomplished the goal that it's set for the citizens. Now I've heard other people speak and say that people have applied for it, but applying for it and actually having a license are two different things. I don't believe anyone has a license yet and I will defer to the clerk on that. But the whole idea was to make sure that local residents were able to take advantage of this supposed um, recreate, I mean, supposed windfall. Now, we found out since then that it's not the windfall it's supposed to be. When it originally came into view, it was supposed to be $87,000 per unit. But when they actually paid us for the one we have, it ended up being only $27,000. So saying that the money is the begin to all of infall, that already has not happened the way it is. The other thing is the fact that because of the way this ordinance was put, where you can have a thousand feet from any other facility makes it makes you able to have more recreational facilities for sale than anything else in the city. Now, if you had micro businesses, 10 micro businesses can go in the space of one. So you're talking about getting that type of money for 10 and it doesn't um, involve screwing up our uh, city by having a marijuana facility on every corner. So like I said, this has not, been the the windfall it's supposed to be and because it's so new i think we need to give it an opportunity to um to uh um uh, we need to give it the opportunity so local people can, are able to uh engage in this so that's why i would like to see us have a meeting where we talk about this again like i said and reinstate the moratorium because it is necessary no one is going to give up money they don't have to. If we hadn't made this a stipulation, there wouldn't be any local people um, having the opportunity to do this. So we're the, we're the caretakers for this. We have to make sure that all of the residents have the opportunity to do what they need to do. Because if somebody can open a full-fledged facility and not share the profits, that's what they're going to do. That's just human nature or business or whatever you want to call it. But we have to make sure that our residents are given the opportunity to share in this if they choose to do so, since the ordinance is already here. You've already said okay to this. 
This is what we want to do. Let's make sure it benefits the people it's supposed to benefit, which are the local residents. And the only way you can do that is putting um, putting stop gaps or putting rules and regulations into place to make sure that their um, their benefits or their privileges are protected. That's what we're here for. We work for the people and we need to start showing that. Now we did it once before, unanimously voted to have this here. We need to do that again to make sure they don't. And then after that time, if no one has been able to do it, then fine. I'm not gonna say another word, but right now we need to make sure we're doing what's necessary for our people to see that they get their fair share. Okay, that's it, ma'am. Okay, um, Councilman Wiley, so are you gonna email the city clerk along with another council member to set up a meeting? Yes, I know I this. I know this is the holiday, so I'm not sure if you want to wait until the first of the year to do have this special meeting. Uh, well, it's probably going to have to end up that way anyway, but I okay. will be sending it to it. What I had hoped is, like you said, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, we have added things to the agenda before. So this shouldn't be any big surprise to anybody who's ever sat on council. We do that because there are times when we have to do business regardless. You know what I'm saying? So All I right. understand that. But I, um, you know, I want to make sure this passes. So I want everybody's support on this particular instance. So whatever is necessary to see that this meeting gets set up at some time, you know, or place. And who knows? Maybe it'll give those people out there who thought they were disenfranchised the opportunity to step in during that time period. But at some point, we got to make sure that we're doing what's right for the residents of Inkster. And if anybody on this council says they don't want to do that, then there's some serious questions about why they ran, okay? Okay, um, so what you do is just set a meeting, you know, email um, along with the other council member uh, to the city clerk and have it for the first of the year. Okay. And then we can have a special meeting or it can be on the agenda, you know, this long as it's something. And then that allow the city attorney to give everyone, uh, all the new uh, elected officials, uh, some um, literature so they can understand what's really going on, okay? That's fine, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Okay, uh, Councilman Chisholm. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just have a few things really quickly. <clears throat> uh, one, I guess, looking at my notes, I'm sorry. I, yeah, two things. One was, I guess, to the city clerk, would you, happen to be able to maybe not provide it this time, but maybe in the distant future, provide a status on the past robocall policy, which we talked about renaming to community alert system. Um, it had, you know, the attorneys had signed off on it. Um, uh, Director Bivens has signed off on it. Media director has signed off on it. And want to get counsel's input on it, you know, so we can move forward. Just because of one instance that happened last week, we had a water main break and the employees had to get out and knock on doors and deliver uh, notices because of the storms and they needed DTE to come out and hold a pole while they worked on it. Mm -hmm. And it would have, you know, helped get that out there. And we want to explore those different things too, with regards to if there's an option with our utility service, and I'm talking about phone service, that it might be something incorporated in there that we can use that option and not have to pay for it, if if that makes sense. But anyway, I'll elaborate on that later. I just wanted to know, uh, Madam uh, Clerk, if you could, I guess, get a status on that. And then the second thing was the um, public notice that we had talked about briefly. Did that issue get resolved that was put out in the telegram? I'm not sure. I'm not sure which she muted. I think she said yes, though. Okay. I did say yes. Okay, great. And other than that, I just want to tell everyone to stay safe during the holidays. Happy holidays. And also, I know there was an issue, and I guess I'll follow up. Well, I am going to follow up with uh, one, two, three net 
and getting the fiber line over to DPS for the last municipal building to be turned up. So I'm going to assist as best I can and helping them contact the railroad commission. But if any of you or if anybody from the county is on the line with us right now that might be able to render some aid to that, uh, please assist us mm -hmm. <laughs> so we can get this last piece connected and move forward. And that's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Shaw. Yes, Madam Chair, I just want to, um, first of all, say happy holidays to, to everyone in the Inkster family uh, and make sure everyone has a safe, safe and prosperous new year. And I do want to say uh, the District 6 Advisory Board will continue to meet. And if you want to be a part of that District Advisory Board meeting, you can certainly email me at uh, dshaw at cityofinkster.com uh, so you can so I can get your email list and I can send you out the the Zoom information. And I also, Madam Chair, want wanted to say a big thanks to Officer Claire, Officer Drew, Officer Dukes uh, for their great bravery that they displayed on December 14th. Uh, we had a young lady, I think our councilwoman had made mention of it, that they, uh, you know, saved the woman that was in the Roots River. Um, they didn't think of themselves as most of our police officers and firefighters do. Uh, they acted very fast. And I just want to say thank, thank you to those three officers uh, for their great, great heroics and for all of our uh, first responders and the job in which they do uh, in working for the community. And also um, thank the young men that came with the uh, emergency rental assistance because the assistance program is, is greatly needed. Uh, and also to our commissioner, Glenn Anderson, who has sent out information about this emergency fund. So that's all I have, Madam Chair, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, I have a couple of things that I um, wanted to speak on. Uh, one, um, the emergency rental assistance program, we have until March the 31st. So this is to our city, uh, city, I'm sorry, city treasurer. Is there any way possible that we can get this information on the water bills that are being sent out? I know we did have some Literature, is there a way possible that we can have this information put on the water bills? Um, you mean about the program in general? Uh, yes. I mean, it's, it does, I mean, just, you know, something that alert, that alert them because we do have a hard time reaching all of our residents. And like you said, a robocall is, has not been set up. So we really need to find a way to get this information out to our residents. So I thought maybe that one might be a, great thing or send out something to each resident, but I do know the water bills are going out. So is this something that we can add to that so they can at least read it? I think once we approve it or, you know, we actually um, say that that's something that we are backing and that we believe in, then we can put that on some of our literature. But um, until then, you know, I'm not sure about how much we can put on our bills, but that's probably something that we could do once we approve it and say, yeah, this is something that we want to support. Okay, so I think maybe tonight would be a good thing that um, if council, if I, my other colleagues would like to support that. And then because it has been done before, I'm not sure how, but it has been done before uh, to put it on the water bill. So that's one way that the residents would know. Um, even if the resident doesn't get the uh, water bills, the landlords will get them. So if that's something that this body will, would like to do tonight, uh, just, just tell me. Um, another thing too, um, I know I emailed you late Friday, maybe Saturday morning in regards to our monthly reports. Um, I have not looked at my email today to see whether or not I've gotten them, but did you end up sending them out to everyone? Yes, I did, and as along with the check register. Okay. Now, uh, were we able to come to um, include the? Um, 
how many salaries on there and what's been paid out as of to date? Were we able to include those? Into, I mean, in, you know, put it into the report. No, that's that's something that I'm still assembling. I've done some departments, but I haven't done all of the departments yet. So some departments I've actually reconciled and figured out what the salaries are and put it into a spreadsheet. But I haven't done it for the entire for the entire city. So once I'm done, I'll give an update to everyone. OK, so the bot, so the balance on the ending balance will be correct or incorrect on those reports. The reports you have are showing the balances for those line items that are not salary. So you could take a look at those line items, the ones that don't involve salaries, and it'll give you an indication of what's been spent as opposed to um, you know, what we have left. But for the salary portion, that's the only portion that we won't be able to evaluate because I'm not done inputting all of the salaries into the spreadsheet. Okay. Okay. And um so when uh, when is the last date of uh, the pay the taxes again? Is it next year in March? Taxes? What do you mean like property? The winter, the winter taxes before it goes down to Wayne County. Uh, February. Okay, February. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and that's all I have. Um, just wish everybody a happy holidays and safe. Holiday. Clerk, and, does he yes. have a date for February? De February what? I believe it's the 15th. 15th? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, one more thing before we close out. I do know that we are, um, I know the contract should be due, should be up for our IT. And I really, really, we really need to look at that. Uh, city treasurer, you and the mayor, because the service that we have been getting to me in the last year has been horrible. And we have paid them a lot of money. So I'm not sure if the contract is over as of right now. Uh, Madam Clerk, maybe you want to send that out to us, to, uh, send us out uh, the date that it expire or when it's going to expire. But we need to talk about that. So in that special meeting, maybe we need to bring that up because this is unacceptable. Um, my, my, our city clerk's phone switched down today. That's not the first time. Uh, people, when I got in my car, because my phone does not hardly work at, in my job, but I've got phone calls saying that uh, DPS systems was down. Uh, residents was calling, wanting to know something. They couldn't get it. This is unacceptable. And this is not, this is happening so many times and we paying them. So we paying them to do nothing. Um, this is the worst that I've seen at IT since I've been a council person. This is the worst. So we may want to include that in our special meeting uh, as well, because I do know that contract is, is coming up if it's not up already, but um I'm just unhappy with the services and I'm not sure how the rest of my council people are feeling, but to me, it's unacceptable. But uh, once again, um, everybody have a safe holiday and uh, we can call for adjournment. Madam Chair, just one thing. I don't know, we didn't talk about the second issue in closed session. So I don't know if you wanted to still talk about it or just, we're just gonna leave. I'm not sure what you, um, we didn't have any votes. We didn't take any votes, so. No, we had two, we had two matters um, that we went into closed session for. We didn't talk about the second matter. So, I mean, I'm just, you know, saying, I mean, we don't have to do anything. Uh, I don't know if he was just, uh, Attorney Nader was just going to, uh, you know, inform us or what, what have you, I don't know. I think he was just going to inform us. I think he was just there just to give us an update. I don't think we would have to. I don't know whether or not we have to share it as of right now. Okay. All right. Um, if, it's, if it's nothing else, then call for adjournment. Mo motion to adjourn. Support. Support. All right. Those in favor say aye. Aye. All aye. right. Good. Good night. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Happy New Year. See you, everyone.